Welcome to RadioBuzz.com and On the Road with Batty Rocks, live at Station 4 in St. Paul, Minnesota, joined by special guest Thomas Youngblood, guitarist for uh, Camelot. You guys are uh, here on your Pandemonium Over North America Tour 2011, 22-leg um, tour, Six or your, your 12 shows in. Yeah. How's the tour going so far? The tour's going great. I mean, um, you know, there's a lot of expectations or different things that we were concerned with but so far the tour has been amazing the uh, support bands have been really good uh, we were hit with the hurricane Irene in the beginning and that kind of you know messed with a couple of shows but ever since then it's just been smooth sailing and you know packed houses and it's been it's been great very nice um, you guys have brought some special guests along with you on this tour Would you tell us who those special guests are um, we have uh, Elise Ridd from the band Amaranth. She's doing the backup vocals, and she does some lead vocals with us. Um, and she's been touring with us uh, at least at least a year or two, maybe almost, almost two years. And she's been an amazing addition to the show. Um, Simone Simmons from the band Epica is uh, on tour with us as well. And um, we have Fabio Leone as the special lead vocalist for this tour. And he also he did Europe with us, South America. And you know, from day one, he stepped in, and it's been like we never missed a beat, you know. And actually, um, in some ways, he's elevated the show to a different level. Very nice. Take Radio Buzz listeners back to 1991 um, when the pro- this project came together, because you've been in this project since the beginning. Yeah. I mean, back then, you know, we were just kids and we wanted to play guitar and drums, and. Um, in the first, I guess, five or six years, it was more of a hobby. We really didn't take it serious. Um, not to say that we're not proud of those albums, but right. at the time, you know, we all had, you know, it was either college or working and stuff like that. So we got to a point where we kind of thought, okay, we have to, if we're going to take this serious, we got to put all our energy into it. And, and that's when, like, in, with the fourth legacy, we really started focusing harder on, on the, on the uh, songs, the production. And we hooked up with Sasha Paith and Miro. In Germany, and I think that they were really uh, instrumental in helping sort of focus our sound. And from that point on, it's just been you know balls to the wall, making new albums, touring, and it's been it's been awesome. Brilliant. Fast forward all these years, Camelot's released a total of nine studio albums. You've gone on many tours, many different bands all over the globe. Um, out of all these albums, which one stands out to you? as being the special project, the one you really, really hold close? For me, it's karma because there was a whole lot of adversity that I had to fight through. I was in Germany for three months working on the record and a lot of stuff was going on back home. So to actually have made it through the album and then reflect back on on the songs and the, and the, the performances, and it just that has a very special sort of uh, feeling to, for me. I know a lot of people that Black Halo is their favorite and, or it's a new record, Porch for the Poison might be their favorite. So, But for me Karma has always been sort of my my uh, like my first child in a way. You know? right. um, Camelot's most recent CD, Poetry for the Poison, you released that mid-2010. Um, it a- appeared to have some, uh, some decent chart positions. Um, you guys also had some special guests on that CD as well. Why don't you talk about some of those special guests? Yeah, I mean, the, the album actually charted higher than any other Camelot record. It was in the top 100 for the billboards and, and all over Europe. Um, it was high, you know, very high, like top 10s in, in a lot of the countries. But um, on that record, you know, with each record, we usually have some guests. And with that, uh, with poetry, we brought in John Oliva, who, um, you know, Sean and I, for example, we're both Tampa guys, and we grew up idolizing sabotage and and bands like that and have John Oliva on the record was just like such an honor you know and then we have Gus G who um, his band Firewind has toured with us several times and we're good friends and I found out he was playing for Ozzy so I I said you have to play on a record (laughs) Um, and he did an amazing job on uh, Hunter Season Um, Simone is on the new record as well and um, we have Speed uh, from the band Soil Work as uh, the growler on, on on the album. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice, I think a nice little guest list uh, for the album. 
you began working on that CD in 2009. Did you guys really tuck yourselves away in a cabin in in, uh, in Norway? Yeah. To yeah. do that? Yeah. What kind of work, explain the process that goes into a project like that and, you know, hibernating away mm -hmm. and writing a, a CD? Well, I mean, it, we always come to the, to the table with ideas already, but it's just been a sort of a tradition to get away from television, internet, and this time we were in this huge cabin in, in Norway. Um, it was totally snowed in, so the only time we really went anywhere was if we had to go get anything for, to eat, you know. But I think those kind of, that kind of isolation really is important to, um, to get the most focused material, you know. And these, these ideas, they just come out of the air, and it's magical. And so far, you know, it's, it's, we've never really run out of ideas. And I think even going forward after this tour, we're going to start working on the new album. I don't know if it's going to be in Norway that I do it, but, I mean, I want to do the same thing, you know, whether it's like a on the beach somewhere, you know, get away for two weeks, focus only on music, no television, no phones. And it's just been a formula that's worked. Um, September 2010, longtime member um, since 1998, Roy Kahn uh, becomes ill. You guys are in the middle of getting ready to go on tour. You have to find a new frontman uh, for this tour. What kind of, uh, explain the process for your, your selection, mm -hmm. you know, and, and who you found to do that? Well, I mean, you know, Roy, Roy called me and said he was, he's burnt out. Um, we knew Michael Erickson. Uh, another singer from Norway, great vocalist. We brought him in to do one show, and then we just decided that we wanted to try to give Roy more time to think about what he's doing, so we didn't do the U.S. tour. In the meantime, I was started looking around, and our producer, Sasha Pett, told me about Fabio, and I knew Fabio from, from years with Rhapsody, and at first I was skeptical because the Rhapsody thing is quite different than Camelot in terms of the vocal um, approach. But then I started li listening to some other projects that he had done, you know, and, and the guy's he's just amazing, you know. And he doesn't, with Camelot, he sings very different than with Rhapsody. And like I said earlier, I think he's elevated the, the, the show. Um, and so we started, we did the European tour, and it was amazing. There was sold-out shows, went to South America. Now we've already had, you know, four or five sold-out shows on this U.S. tour. So, I mean, the good thing about, about it is the band... You know, we have proven that the band is the band, you know. Um, and I think with Fabio, we've been able to just really not skip a beat. When, uh, in April of 2011, when Roy announces his departure from the band, um, after his trying to recover from the burnout, he explained to Radio Buzz listeners in the music industry, what is the burnout? I don't really know. I mean, I'm pretty sure that there are other factors that somehow compelled him to have to, you know, say, I can't do this anymore. I know you've got, a, I know you've got people in mind for that position, mm -hmm. but what kind of uh, selection process goes into that? I mean, it's, you know, it starts with the voice. You know, first and foremost, a person has to be a great singer. I'm looking for somebody that has uh, a unique character to their voice. They don't have to sound like any other singer that we've had. I want them to be an artist, you know, be a rock star. What's the future hold for Camelot? It's exciting, actually. You know, the, the, we've had probably, in all our years of touring, we've had more fun on these few tours than ever. Um, and I think it's really sparked our, our love for what we do for the fans. So I'm really excited. Right after this tour is over, we're going to probably take about a month off and then we get right back into the writing process. Um, we're going to try to involve the band more with the songwriting. And, um, you know, we already have new record deals in, in process. And so the uh, for me, I, I look at it as an opportunity to actually grow. Um, let Radio Buzz listeners know where they can uh, keep up with you guys. And more importantly, the music. Yeah, if you go to Camelot.com, you can check out everything there. There's all the links you need. There's, you know, links to, to song files. Of course, we have Camelot uh, Facebook. So just put, put in Camelot Official. Um, we want everybody to come out there and join the, 
the Camelot Army and and uh, look forward to seeing them at the shows. Right on. Thanks for taking the time uh, for this interview, and uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. Um, good luck with the rest of the tour and continued success to all of you. Great. Um, you've heard it here, Radio Buzz listeners, on the road with Matty 